Lithium battery fires. It's the biggest, fastest growing uh, fire safety issue, not just in the UK, but worldwide. This is happening everywhere. So just want to cover what they are, what we can do about it. So first of all, let's make it clear. Lithium ion batteries is the true title. Oh, and before this one falls off, I'm going to put that down there for a minute. But lithium ion spelled I-O-N, remember chemistry? Not lithium metal, the stuff again from chemistry labs you put in water and catches fire. Very, very different product. Now just to let you know how it works. Lithium batteries, so your Tesla, whatever it is, a drill, has a bunch of like little AA batteries and they are soldered together. Now, if you don't believe me, Google it. They really are. So a Tesla has thousands of these all in sequence soldered together. So when one catches fire, the, the heat off it, because the amount of energy in these tiny things is massive, the heat transfers to the other, to the other, to the other. It's called thermal runaway. Now, of course, these are then in a sealed compartment. So you can't, you can fire a fire extinguisher at it, but it's within a sealed compartment. So these keep going. Now, I'm gonna, not gonna tell you, do not buy cheap stuff off marketplaces, secondhand, but I'm gonna tell you, do not, be careful of how you look after these things. Do not leave them charging overnight. Even in, uh, in our warehouse here, we use lithium iron pallet trucks. No one is allowed to leave one charging overnight. They're not allowed to be left charging near other combustible materials, for instance. Basic housekeeping, you'll be fine. So, what can you do about it? Can you put them out? Now here you go with some honesty. Um, there are fire extinguishers. We ourselves have our specialist Lith-M battery extinguisher. We also sell the Lith-X range and the LFX range. Very effective products, but very unlikely to put a fire out. This is a lithium battery fire blanket. We have three. This one is the smaller one, which is three meters by two meters, about 10 foot by six foot. Uh, we have the second one, bring it back up here. This one is four meters by three meters, slightly bigger things. And then there's the car fire blanket, which is the original reason for them. Those are, including ours, are generally eight meters by six meters. They take two people. Um, as with all of these, you have the full instructions on how to use it. If you want to see how the fire blanket works in reality, because these are a bit big for me to get out and dangle over something, then go and watch our video where we had two staff using the car fire blanket. They had no advanced instructions. They were given the bag, uh, read the label, do it. It's quite easy to use, but should you be using them? So that's the other thing. When these things catch fire, you'll have seen the videos on YouTube and on the news. They are very, very quick, very, very violent. The amount of energy they contain is ridiculous and they will give off toxic fumes. So I'm gonna tell you, this might be controversial, but would I stand there with a fire extinguisher trying to put one out? No, I wouldn't. I would be getting everyone out of the building safely and calling the fire brigade. But what are, why are you demonstrating a fire blanket then, John? That's slightly different. Let me get one out. Uh, by the way, just before I, I forgot to do that, these have a strap on the back, so you can come over your back, tape them to the place very easily. Good, good quality bag. Open it up. Product, yes, it's solid. Uh, the small one probably weighs about four kilos or something, um, but it's very easy to use. It's like, it's like a, a, a sort of fire blanket material, um, specially impregnated, much heavier duty. Uh, as you can imagine, it is designed for this product. Undo it, you'll see these have very, very large tabs. Now, on ours, these are made from the same material as the blanket. And the idea is that with two people, instead of with a fire blanket, where you, you know, pull the tabs down and you put it over the thing, with this, there's two of you, hold it out straight and drape it over the fire in the middle so you don't go too close. Would I be using one? Yes, if I deemed it safe to do so. If it's in a little room, no. Toxic fumes, get out, be careful. You don't know what you're breathing in. If it's in a larger area, if you can put this over it, uh, there is a there are new standards coming out. There's a German one, a DIN standard, and they call it 
a fire limitation blanket. They do not call it an extinguishing or a suppression one. It is to limit the fire spread until the fire brigade come. So this is a serious product. If you want to get a quality one, uh, you might ask why ours orange? So that you can spot this is a genuine visual blanket as opposed to all of the cheap imports. Uh, somewhere on here, it will be hidden in one of these, there will be a date sewn into the blanket and a traceability for the manufacturer. Generally the cheap imports are silver or grey or standard sort of whitey fire blanket colour. Um, quality ones tend to be slightly different to denote, denote them. There are good ones. Please be careful, prevent the fire happening in the first place, but be aware, check with your insurance if you have to have one of these devices to cover them. But there will be further details um, on our other videos about the products and about the extinguishers. You can follow the links at the end of this video.